we've been looking at three sweet stories about Easter. This is story number two. And the question is, what did Jesus do? On this weekend that is celebrated, what actually happened and why is it important? My niece, when she was at university, had taken a biblical Hebrew course and she had also recently visited Israel. And so when she was on the internet on one occasion, she came across an Israel channel, which had a few Gentiles on it, but mostly Jewish young people. And she was a bit surprised at how little they knew of their own scriptures. But then one day, a young man named Benjamin, a college student, came online and began to discuss things with her. And it became evident that he had a greater knowledge of the Hebrew scriptures than many of the other students. As they talked, he asked her, was she in a relationship? And he was a bit surprised when he found out that she was a Gentile, and yet she had been learning Hebrew, and also she had visited the land of Israel, and that she wasn't anti-Semitic. So when he asked her, was she in a relationship, she explained to him that her best friend had actually died. And he was very sorry to hear this. And he said, where did it happen? And she said, just outside of Jerusalem. He said, how did it happen? And she said, well, he was actually protecting me. They killed him. They murdered him. He was quite horrified at this. And he said, when did it happen? And she said, a long time ago, actually, it was about 2,000 years ago. And there was a silence. And then he typed in, are you crazy? And she responded, well, I would be crazy not to love someone who died to save me. Well, that was the end of the conversation. He disappeared for a while, but then he came back. A few days later, he wanted to learn more, and they began to look at the Hebrew scriptures. He had the impression that Messiah was simply to be some sort of political and perhaps military leader who would deliver Israel from its oppressors, its persecutors. But she began to share so many of the scriptures that point to the Lord Jesus, and not only to who he is, but to what he would do. You can't read Psalm 22 or Isaiah 53 without recognizing that Messiah is going to suffer and die. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And God laid on him the iniquity of us all. And so when we read these scriptures, we realize that the most momentous event in the history of the world is the one celebrated this weekend. That the perfect, spotless Son of God would be made sin for us, would take to account all of our sin and pay the price in full so that we could be forgiven. And not only so, but that he would be able to reconcile us to God, to bring us back into a living friendship with the God of the universe. What an amazing story this is. I hope we never get used to it, but I hope we not only know the information, but come to know the person who not only died, but rose again and lives in the hearts of those who put their trust in him.